Yep, come on in. And as you come in, if you would be so kind, hit that share button. So as you come in, as I stated, um, if you would hit that, just hit that share button so someone will know that we're on live. Um, good evening to each and every one of you. Um, thank you all so much for joining us uh, for our Wednesday now. Uh, we're in a new series on tonight. Um, so uh, I hope that uh, those that uh, specifically are Grow Bikes and Covenant Partners um, or those that follow the page were able to purchase the book. Um, as we're starting in a new series on tonight, and we'll be in that series for uh, quite some time. So uh, if you would uh, go ahead and get your your, uh, your pencils and pens, whatever, uh, out uh, so that you can take good notes. Uh, so that the time that we spend together will be um, well spent and not just uh, a labor of time, but actually a time that we're diving into the Word of God together uh, as a uh, family. Uh, and so um, as we always start off with, um, greet each and every one of you with Jesus' joy, uh, with the grace and the peace of our, uh, of our Heavenly Father. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Oak Grove NBC Wednesday. Now, this is our Bible study uh, platform. We call it Nuggets of Wisdom, as most of you are already aware. And uh, I am Pastor Cobb. Uh, I am honored that you would come and join us on tonight and be a part of this um, cyber uh, setting. And so, um, thank God for each and every one of you. I want to start off um, with uh, prayer and then go through a few reminders and then jump into where we're going tonight. So, Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this day. Thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. Before we ask you for anything, we just want to take the time to thank you for everything. We thank you for how you've been faithful to us. And bless the time that we shall spend together on tonight. Be in the midst of everything that we say and do. Order our steps through and by your word. Lead us in the way that you have us to go. We will forever give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so uh, on tonight, uh, so to our grow bikes and uh, those that are in surrounding areas, our covenant partners, to, to lot it out of everybody, uh, we are in revival again tomorrow night uh, at the Grove at 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, the Dr. J. Vincent Terry and the Mount Peace Missionary Baptist Church out of Raleigh will be our guest on tomorrow night. So we do invite you to tell a neighbor, tell a friend. Uh, we have another uh, headlining preacher. When I say that, not for the pop from the is popular, but not from the popularity standpoint uh, per se, but just from a seasoned uh, man or woman of God. And so we're, we're grateful for what the did, what the Lord did in the first two nights. 
and uh, we're looking forward to what he's going to do tomorrow night. So we do invite each and every one of you to bundle up. Uh, we'll have the heat on uh, at the church, um, but certainly uh, it won't, we won't need to set it too high because we know once we come together, um, we you know the fire gets going and you don't need much heat uh, when the Holy Ghost comes in. So tomorrow we invite you to join us for our uh, revival as we resume with our revival on tomorrow night. Also, let us be in prayer. For the Farrar Farrar family, um, uh, one of our covenant partners, Sister Shannon uh, Farrar, lost her grandmother, uh, Miss Helen Edwards. And to our Grovites, your Grovite Weekly News will go out tomorrow. Um, we do need, if we've got any of our Grovites, the, the funeral service will be on Monday. Um, and the time uh, is like 12 or 1. I, we're going to send that information out to you tomorrow. But if there are individuals that are planning to attend um, that are... Um, uh, used to serving um, in the uh, as, as far as food and things of that nature, please uh, let me know uh, as they, they need uh, a few service to help uh, with the repast uh, at the church. So again, she she she's one of us. Couldn't be more of a growbite if she was on, actually on our roll. So we're gonna do what we can to show love. So if we have any of our grow bites, um that um, are willing and are able to uh, help us out with that. Uh, to kind of relieve uh, that church family um, and that family that would be so great. So if you would, uh, when we send out the Grow Bike Weekly News tomorrow, uh, if you just respond individually to that and let us know that you're willing and you're able and we can submit your names to uh, whoever needs it and um, they'll let you know what they need from you. So again, uh, good evening to everyone. If you have not already hit that share button, uh, sharing is caring. All right, so tonight we're starting a new series. We end it. Uh, our last series on uh, with Family Matters. Um, and so we're going to start tonight. And, and so if you have not purchased this book, um, it's like $10 and some change on Amazon. I know you can get it, download it to your Kindle, um, you know, or, or you can download an e-copy, shall I say. Um, so this is where we'll be. So this is where we'll be. And we're just going to see what the Lord is going to do in this series. Um, I, I am under the impression that um, I would love for us to go back inside the church um, and I don't see why we can't uh, to actually have an intimate setting and session uh, as we journey through this book together. Uh, Facebook Live is a beautiful platform. It's a beautiful opportunity for us to share. Uh, but you're not able to ask questions. You're not able to talk back to me. Um, and so when you get into a series like this, you really want to be able to talk back and ask questions on the spot. So um, we'll kind of see how that goes. Uh, we don't want to just show up and just have, you know, nobody there. Uh, but um, I do think it's important to our grow bites for us to really take action or to really take advantage of the time that we're going to spend together. And uh, perhaps let's do this together in uh, the uh, sanctuary. So with that being stated, uh, get grab your books, get yourselves uh, in a good space so that we can go ahead and journey through this together on tonight. I also want to say by way of reminders, um, let's just keep everybody in prayer. Let's just keep everybody in prayer. This is a praying time. And as we journey through this book, um, I will say to you, there's no harm in you going ahead, jumping ahead. Tonight, we're going to try to cover chapter one um, and introduce the book uh, each week. The goal will be to cover at least one chapter. Um, as you see, there's quite a few chapters in this book. Um, some weeks we may combine and do, um, there's 17 chapters, looks like. Um, we may combine and do more than just the one. Um, but we want to make sure that we are taking advantage of the time. So again, I, I kind of got a feeling that this may end up being uh, us coming off the air on Facebook and actually just going into the actual physical sanctuary or more of a private setting because you're not able to talk back to me on this platform. But we'll go with the, we're going to go with the, we're going to roll with the punches on the night. Um, but just throwing it out. So uh, the gifts and ministries of the Holy Spirit. So those of you that are plugged into our ministry know that this year is the year of spiritual reset. The harvest is plentiful. The labors are few. Pray to the Lord of harvest that he will send laborers, workers. And uh, as we said on the first Sunday, that um, the world is ready and ripe uh, to be picked for Jesus. Uh, but the problem is we ain't got a whole lot of folks that are willing to work. And so with that, as we talk about spiritual reset, we're going to go back to the foundation. Now, we've talked about the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, um, uh, many times within our church uh, from the preaching standpoint and the teaching standpoint. But we want to journey through this book. This is a very good book, um, and there's nothing that's over your head. So you could be new to Bible study, uh, new to reading your Bible, and this is not too much um, for you to chew off or for you to uh, bite. It's not, you're not biting off more than you can chew, shall I say. Uh, if you get into this book. So, again, 
Uh, let's go into uh, the, the, the book on tonight. So if you read, I don't know if y'all read it, and I, I just encourage you, it's your book. Highlight, you know, I, I got stuff, you know, I'm highlighting and I write stuff to the side. Um, that's, that's important for you to take advantage of the time that we're going to spend together. But for those that have read the book, if you read the preface and the introduction, you'll see um, that the author, uh, Mr. Uh, Sumrall, uh, how um, he kind of began his journey and how this whole book came into fruition. I'm not going to go into all of that on tonight, but I will say uh, that if you just read the introduction, you can see that the Holy Spirit was at work. And so this is what compelled him to kind of go forth and uh, write this book. And so uh, you can read introduction is in the front of the book. Um, but tonight we're going to start with part one, um, part one, uh, part one, um, which or chapter one, excuse me, which is the nature and role of the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to do an introduction. We'll talk between uh, the book and kind of some things that uh, we desire to say to you on tonight. All right. So as we begin um, this new series, the gifts and the ministries of the Holy Spirit, let me just point out in our introduction, um, who is the Holy Spirit? I know I didn't say what uh, because the Holy Spirit is a he. Who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is a third member of the triune God. So we that are Trinitarian, in other words, we believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, uh, God in three persons. Um, we are, you know, we that are of that faith, and there's some people that uh, don't believe that, but we we uh, believe that uh, that there's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That is what you would consider Trinitarian. Uh, but the Holy Spirit is the third member. Uh, the Father is first, the Son is second, and then the Holy Spirit is third. But they're all the same, the three in one. It's just God expressing himself in three different ways. God, the Father, of course, God coming in the form of flesh, um, Jesus the Christ. Um, John chapter 1 says the word became flesh. Um, and so we understand that Jesus is really God, um, his son, but he came wrapped in uh, flesh. And then we go to uh, the Holy Spirit, which is the God, the, the paraclete, um, which is our helper, our comforter. And so the Holy Spirit is the third uh, personality uh, of the triune God here. And as such, it is fully God and fully personal. So the Holy Spirit is not less uh, lesser than the Father or the uh, or uh, the Son. Uh, they are all equal, three in one. So there are numerous texts in the New Testament as well as, um, you know, enumerations in the Old Testament that speak of the implicity of his deity. So uh, a lot of people don't think the Holy Spirit was really at work until Acts chapter 2. But the Holy Spirit was at work from the beginning. From the beginning, it was always God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So, uh, but we didn't see the Son, uh, just like uh, many people debate about Christ, Jesus Christ, where he, he, he didn't come or he didn't exist until he came uh, in the uh, Gospels. But Jesus was already um, there, he was already present, but did not come in the form uh, that we saw him uh, until we get the Gospels. But nonetheless, uh, they were all operating uh, and fully functioning uh, in the heavenly. And so, uh, if as we read the word of God, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, we will see that the Holy Spirit has been at work. I'm laying the foundation uh, so that as we go through this series, um, I don't want to just make y'all get happy, um, but I want us to learn about the gifts and the ministries of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit enables men and women to confess their true identity of Christ. And I'm already throwing out nuggets. Write out what you want to, how you want to do it. So the Holy Spirit enables men and women to confess uh, the true identity of Christ and worship. And we see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3, Philippians chapter 3, verse 3, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18. So he is the source of spiritual life. So he's not just uh, gives us the identity of Christ and, and, and worshiping him uh, and confessing that, but he is also the source of spiritual life. And we see that in Galatians chapter 5, verse 25. Um, in Galatians chapter 6, verse 8, and in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 through 14. And the good thing about Facebook Live is that you can go back, and if I'm going a little too fast for you, you can go back and watch the replay um, so that you can get those, skip those scripture references. He also gives believers insight into divine mysteries uh, since he plums the depths of God. And we see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. Uh, also, he is gloriously, he, he gloriously transforms believers into the image of Christ and makes them the temple of God. 
2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Now, those of y'all, I'm not trying to inundate you with scripture, but I'm throwing this out there so that you go back in your leisure time and read it so that you can connect the dots. Because we want to do more than just uh, recite the word, we want to eat the word, right? So, he is also described as eternal. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14, and uh, we see that, uh, so the Holy Spirit has been at work, and we're just laying the foundation for us on tonight, that um, he, before we see him at work in Acts chapter 2, again I say, at the point of repetition, he was already at work, and so um, go back and read those scriptures, and it'll bring a little bit more uh, the focus point of who the Holy Spirit is, and again, it's not an it, hence why I did not say what, uh, it is who the Holy Spirit is, because the Holy Spirit is a he. Um, also, uh, as a person, as a person, as we talk about the Holy Spirit, uh, he can be grieved. Um, we can grieve the Holy Spirit. Uh, he can be grieved and lied unto. Uh, we see that in Isaiah uh, chapter 63, verse 10, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, and Acts chapter 5, verse 3 through 4. Now, I would love to go through all these scriptures and read them verbatim, uh, but certainly, you know, we, we this series would take the whole year. Um, but nonetheless, uh, you just jot down uh, as we go along. Uh, he leads believers, um, and so he, he can be lied to and grieved um, as a person, and uh, he leads believers, which we see in uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. He enables prayer. He enables prayer. So we really don't know how to pray or what to pray for, but he enables prayer, and we see that in Jude 20 uh, and Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. And he even prayed. The Holy Spirit knows how to pray. Uh, and we see that in Romans chapter 8, uh, verses 26 through 27. And again, good evening to everybody. We see our trustee, uh, John Thomas, uh, our evangelist Sims, and sister Yolanda Farrington. God bless each and every one of you and others that may be on our live on tonight. God bless your hearts. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now, uh, so uh, we see there are numerous passages in the New Testament. Uh, where Paul wrote his letters, where the Holy Spirit is joined together with the Father and the Son as co-sources of the divine blessings that belong to believers in Christ. So we're going somewhere, but we, we, we you know, we gotta start off uh, and crank the car before uh, we can ride. And so we see that in Second Corinthians chapter thir uh, thirteen, uh, verse fourteen, uh, Titus chapter three, verses four through seven. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 through 6, and Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4 through 6. Um, and again, uh, we see that in 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 2, and Jude, verses 20 through 21. And Jesus said this, that after his departure, he would send his followers the Holy Spirit, which is another comforter. Uh, you know, who would become uh, or who would be with them always and lead them into all truth. And so again, who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit would come and he would convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. In other words, to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and its fulfillment. So again, the Holy Spirit has been at work and he has been at work for a long time. So don't allow those that are not uh, Trinitarian, those that don't believe, they believe that the Holy Spirit was not doing anything until Acts chapter 2 when the day of Pentecost came. No, the Holy Spirit was already in existence before then, but he had not been experienced in that mass way. In that mass way, you understand in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was only privileged to those to three types of people, the prophet, the priest, and the king. Those were the three individuals that had access to the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit would come and uh, fall upon the prophet and they would say, thus said the Lord. And, uh, uh, and then he would leave. Uh, and then he would, and so uh, he, he, was, he didn't dwell with men uh, always. And so this is why you had uh, in the uh, temple, it was set up uh, where uh, you had the holies of holy, the inner courts, outer court, those that know, uh, go back and read the, 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 the five books of the law, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. You'll see the way that the temple was set up, uh, that only the priests could go behind the veil, which was the holies of holies. That was where the presence of God was. And so when Christ died, 
When Christ died, uh, the, the Bible says that the veil was torn or rent uh, into two parts, and it was ripped from top or bottom to the top. And so uh, it's no longer a holies of holies. Uh, there's no longer a, a specific place that you got to go. It gave all of us access to God. And that is good news to us that our believers in Christ Jesus. And so the reality is the Holy Spirit has always been at work, but it was not until Christ died in Acts chapter 2 that he was uh, poured out in a mass way. All right. So uh, again, uh, that's for us to understand that the Holy Spirit has always been at work. He's always been moving. He's always been up to something. And so again, uh, as if you're just joining us, you want to get this book, um, which is called the gifts and ministries of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I ordered it off Amazon um, for like ten dollars and some change. You want to get this book so you can follow along with us as we go through uh, this next or, or this series as we journey through uh, our lesson. All right. So uh, the next point that we'd like to uh, discuss to you on tonight is as we think about and as we talk about the Holy Spirit, then we need to talk about let's kind of uh, jog and uh, trot to the baptism. Of the Holy Spirit, because there's much debate in the body of Christ about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I promise you, I'm laying this foundation so that we can get into uh, the first chapter of the book on tonight. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit is where there's much controversy. You have uh, some folks that say you got to be baptized a certain way. You got to be baptized in Jesus only. You know, they, you, the, the way you got to be baptized is in Jesus only. They look at Acts two and thirty eight, and they say uh, that you know it's only Jesus. And you have some that are baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and in Jesus' name. Um, there are some that um, believe otherwise, but uh, there's a lot of debate that goes on about how you should be baptized. And the reality is, uh, the point of view that we're trying to come to you on tonight is uh, that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the indwelling, the filling of the Holy Spirit. So, we, you know, the, the, I, like, I think that a lot of times we focus on how a person was baptized rather than have you received the indwelling. Has the Holy Spirit come in and does he dwell inside of you? Uh, because the reality is uh, the, the, the preacher or whoever can say whatever they want to say, but unless there's a transformation that takes place, uh, then the reality is the ceremony, uh, although it's important, although it's very important, it does not mean much. And so there's much debate about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Some believe that, uh, that unless you go down and you are immersed in water, that you cannot enter into heaven. Let me tell you something, beloved. That is a myth. Because if that were true, what about the believer who has a uh, critical illness? Suppose someone, uh, uh, you know, with or, or, or confesses Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior on their deathbed. And they cannot be baptized because uh, they've got tubes and everything in them. Do uh, you think that God is going to keep them out of heaven? Certainly not. But I'm not, I am not, again, I'm not against baptism. I got baptized in 98 uh, because we believe as believers it is an um, outward confession of an inward confession. It is an outward profession of an inward confession. In other words, it is showing others that we have made Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So there's much debate in the body of Christ on how you should be baptized, where you should be baptized, what should be said. And I want to say to you humbly, rather than focusing on that, the focus should be, uh, does the Holy Spirit dwell inside of you? And so the baptism of the Holy Spirit is understood in two different ways as for the sake of teaching on tonight. Either as synonymous with the Spirit dwelling, a, a person at conversion, or a subsequent act in which Christ baptizes a believer with the Holy Spirit to empower that person in a unique way for ministry. So uh, that's what I just said. So you have one where uh, it is with the Spirit indwelling a person at conversion, uh, or as a subsequent act in which Christ baptizes a believer with the Holy Spirit to empower that person in a, uni in a unique way for ministry. So, so stay with me if you can. Stay with me uh, if you can. So all four Gospels, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they record John the Baptist's pronouncement that Jesus Christ uh, will baptize his father, his, his follower, excuse me, with the Holy Spirit. John says, I baptize you with water, but there's one that's going to come after me, and he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And so when John was baptized, it was just water. Uh, but he said that when Christ came, he would baptize them in a different way. So in Acts, 
Luke, the writer, reports two uh, conversion stories that involve groups of people who initially believed in Christ and only later received the Spirit. We see that in Acts, and Luke calls this later gift of the Spirit the falling or the receiving or the coming of the Holy Ghost. So let me just back up here. What are you talking about, Brother Cobb? Is, you know, when someone says the Holy Spirit failed tonight, the Spirit failed tonight, but someone received uh, the Holy Spirit or uh, the Holy Spirit came on to so-and-so, uh, that is when uh, those individuals have been consumed and dwell with the Holy Spirit, His presence sits on them. So uh, as we as we talk about, so you got to understand the Holy Spirit, who He is, uh, He is the third person in the Godhead, but then when we talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, our focus is not the, you know, the, the, the water, and how deep the water is, what did the preacher say, and all of this. No, the, the focus is have you been consumed? Have you have does he reside in you? And um, many people say, Oh, yeah, I, I know I've been born again. And I, I will submit to you humbly, you never have to question if a person has uh been filled, uh, because if they have been filled, it will show. It now, now here comes the other part where there's a lot of controversy because uh some people believe that um uh, you gotta speak in tongues. You they believe that unless you speak in tongues, you don't, you don't have the Holy Ghost. And, and, and again, I say, we're, we're not trying to go get nobody doctrine, but it's going from the word of God. The tongues are a gift. Everybody won't speak in the, he cut on my side, I see, no, no, no. Everybody won't speak in that unknown tongue. But some will because it is a heavenly language. Now, it, this is what I submit to you humbly on tonight. Everybody don't have the same gifts. And this is where a lot of controversy comes in. And, uh, you know, that's why we got all these denominations because this denomination says that they're right. This denomination says they're right. And this and third. The reality is everybody's not going to speak in tongues because tongues is a gift. But, and those of the old growth, uh, old growth understand that everybody, while you may not speak in an unknown tongue, you will speak, everybody will speak in a new tongue. A new tongue. Put that in the chat for if you're listening to me. Everybody put new tongue, new tongue. Everybody that is born again, all believers, all believers in Christ Jesus, amen, will speak in a new tongue. You may not, you know, speak in that language and it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful gift. I speak it as the Holy Spirit gives utterance. Amen. But uh, because of this myth in the body of Christ, you got people now that imitate other folks. And so as a result, you got folks that are being, you know, because you hear somebody say, you know, speak in tongues a certain way, they're basically copying, copying them. You got folks that'll take you in a certain room and tell you how to, you know, you know, how to, how to, you know, how to do it. And the reality is, it's a gift. And when it's a gift, no one has to teach you how to do it. No one has to show you how to. No one has to show you how to do it. It comes naturally, and I'm just saying that for me, uh, that I, you know, me, I, I you know, I. The Lord has blessed me, and I desired it. And I remember when I first got filled uh, with the Holy uh, Holy Holy Ghost. I say Holy Ghost, or uh, same thing with the Holy Spirit. And when He filled me, uh, my my language changed. And I, I there's no other way I can explain it other than it's not something that comes from your mind. It's something that comes from the inside. And so it's not something that you can just oh let me just you know no 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 no, no. it doesn't happen like that. Uh, the Bible says that they they spoke as the Spirit gave them utterance. So there must be that the Holy Spirit must be in work in your life in order for you to. Speak speak in the unknown uh, tongue, but everybody that is a believer in Christ Jesus, I submit, will speak in a new tongue. And so when you get saved and you're born again, that is you used to say, you shouldn't say anymore. Now, when you start off in Christ, you may not say it as much because we are in a day-to-day -day walk. But you should not say those things anymore. That should not be the type of conversation that you're having. That's because we get a new tongue. If you have not typed that in the chat thread, just put in there, new tongue, new tongue. All of us that are believers in Christ Jesus should have a new tongue, a new way of walking, a new way of talking, a new way of, you know, you should there should, there should be some conversations that we should know longer desire to be in because we walk in the newness of life. The Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creature. So there's a lot that comes from us that should be new, 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 new. And so, amen, as we understand the word of God, we understand that everybody's not going to do the same thing, but everybody ought to speak in a new tongue. All right. So as we go through, amen, our lesson on tonight or our foundational piece, uh, let's turn to Acts chapter 8. 
Acts chapter 8, if you have your Bibles, Acts chapter 8, uh, verse 4 through 17. I just want to lay the foundation as we go into our time that we're going to spend together. Acts chapter 8, verses 4 through 17. And I want to read this for your consideration as we talk about the Holy Spirit uh, from the Living Bible Translation. Acts chapter 8, verses 4 through 17 from the Living Bible Translation. And it says this, but the believers who had fled Jerusalem, went everywhere preaching the good news about Jesus. And so the gospel is spreading like wildfire. Then it talks about someone specifically. It says, Philip, for instance, went to the city of Samaria, and he told the people there about Christ. Crowds listened intently to what he had to say because of the miracles that he did. Many evil spirits were cast out, screaming as they left their victims, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was much joy in that city. Verse 9, a man named Simon uh, had formerly been a sor sorcerer. And so this is not Simon Peter. This is Simon the sorcerer. Uh, there for many years, he was a very influential, proud man. Because of the amazing things he could do, in fact, the Samaritan people often spoke of him as the Messiah. But now they believe Philip's message. So Philip preached a completely different message than Simon, because Simon uh, was preaching something of great influence, but Philip was preaching, according to verse 5, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So let's read on here. But now they believe Philip's message that Jesus was the Messiah uh, and his words concerning the kingdom of God. And many men and women were baptized. All right, They were baptized. They were baptized. Uh, they were basically, they went, you know, take me to the water to be baptized. They were baptized as a outward confession of an in or outward profession of an inward confession. So that baptism there, I want you to say with me here. So the, the folks that were baptized here in verse 12, this is not the infilling of the Holy Spirit. They were just physically baptized. Let me read on. Verse 13, then Simon himself believed and was baptized and began following Philip. Wherever he went and was amazed by the miracles, he did. Verse 14, when the apostles back in Jerusalem heard that the people of Samaria had accepted God's message, they sent down Peter and John. And as soon as they arrived, they began praying for these new Christians. Get this to receive the Holy Spirit. So, so far, they've been baptized, but they have not received the indwelling, the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Okay, verse 16. For as yet he had not come upon any of them, for they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And this is why I said what I said earlier, because it does us no good. If we are baptized on the outside, you know, that is a beautiful thing. But what, what we're trying to suggest to you on tonight is, are you filled? Because a lot of times we focus on how you got baptized, who baptized, did you wear a white robe, did you wear this, that, no, no, no. God, I submit to you, humbly, God is not concerned with, uh, you know, all of the traditional things that we do. He's concerned of, did you create a space in your life where the Holy Spirit can come in and occupy? Verse 17 is where we're trying to get. Then Peter and John laid their hands. Upon these believers, so 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 if you if you've been following me, these folks had not received the Holy Ghost. Uh, but the but 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 the text would have us to know that they had been praying uh, that, that that these folks would receive the Holy Spirit. And verse seventeen says that after Peter and John laid their hands on believers, uh, and it says, and they received the Holy Spirit. So now you, he has come and he has uh, began to do a work in their lives. And that is what our point is to you on tonight. There is a difference. And I submit to you, don't get hung up on some of this traditional stuff. Well, how did you get back? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. He, is he dwelling in your life? Notice I didn't say it. Is the Holy Spirit dwelling in your life? And people will tell you, child, if you got the Holy Ghost, then you won't do this. Uh, will you understand what the power of the Holy Spirit does in your life? No one has to tell you uh, what to do and how to do it because he will convict you. And I will submit to you humbly that the Holy Spirit does not work the same way in everybody's lives. Let me just say it like this. He does convict us. Uh, but but what happens is we look at someone, you know, you got a person here. You got John Doe, who's been saved for 10 years. And then you got Jane Doe, who's been saved for 10 years. And John Doe looking at Jane Doe saying, well, 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 I don't do this. I don't do that. I don't do the other. Uh, Jane Doe, you still doing it. So, so you ain't got it. And the reality is 
Nobody should really be looking at nobody else trying to figure out whether they got it or not. You should be focusing on you. You are the only person that you can change. You're the only person, amen, that, that, that is our focus in the body of Christ. And many times we look at other folks, but how they feel doing that. Well, when you hear those things, your job is to pray for them. Well, can you, I, can, did you hear what I heard? They cussed them out. Well, your job is to pray for them. Well, did you hear that, that so-and-so is cheating on a husband? Well, your job is to pray for them. Because it's funny how oftentimes nobody wants to give grace until they slip up. And so when we understand what the power of the Holy Spirit is all about, it's not about pointing your finger at nobody else. We ain't got no right. I don't care if somebody is just as mean as, you know, five, uh, you know, uh, uh, five uh, pit bulls, uh, you know, that, that are junkyard dogs. We have no right to send them to hell. And because of this um, traditionalism, and, and, and people overstepping their bounds in the body of Christ. Many people are guilty of telling folks, you going to hell. And we can't, we don't have the right to condemn nobody. And so, so, so our focus is, when we understand what the power of the Holy Spirit does in our lives, is to focus on what? Myself. Even though I pastor a beautiful church, the reality is I can preach every Sunday. And some folks still may not change. And the reality is, it ain't my job to change you. Come on here. The only person that you can change, and you really can't change yourself, but the only person that you can aid in changing is you. That's where your focus is. And so when we talk about 2024, we want more in 2024. We want, you know, more God, more of this, more of that. I want to be more like him. I want to I want to talk more like him. I want to walk more like him. And even if it's just, even if it's just a little bit more, that's better than what I was doing last year. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So our goal is to be more like him in 2024. More in 2024. And so uh, the text says that they, they were baptized, but then uh, at the end of the verse, or at the end of verse 17, we see where they received the Holy Spirit. So there's a difference between you going through the ceremony versus, you, versus the Holy Spirit actually resting upon you. And that's what we desire. Don't focus on how a person, well, what church you belong to. That ain't, that ain't the focus. The focus is, are you, does he occupy a place in your life? Have you created a place for him to dwell in your life? And when you create an area for him to dwell, he'll come in and he'll change you. He'll come in, he'll make you new, he'll come in, and he'll take you from one place to the other. Amen. If I got a witness, somebody ought to type in amen. All right, so so let's look at, uh, we've already looked at Acts chapter 18, or uh, Acts chapter 8. Let's look now at Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 7. And I want to read this for your consideration from the message version. Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 7 from the message version. Amen, amen. Now, I know that's right. If, again, if you're just joining us and you uh, have not hit that share button, do us a favor and hit share. Let somebody else know, amen, that, uh, with, that, that, that God is blessing us on tonight at Wednesday now. Now, so verses uh, 1 through 7 from Acts chapter 19 says this. Now it happened that while Apollos was away in Corinth, Paul made his way down through the mountains, came to Ephesus, and happened on some disciples there. The first thing he said was, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Did you take God into your mind only, or did you also embrace him with your heart? Did he get inside of you? Now, that's a good question. Did you just get baptized? And that's what we got to ask ourselves. Did I just get baptized? Well, I got baptized in 72, and, 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 and he made me brand new. But did you, did you just go through the process, or did he get inside of you? Because that's the focus. That's what we want. We want him to be inside of us. Because you having a certificate is a beautiful thing. And thank God for the certificate. You got baptized in 72, 82, 92, whatever year you got baptized. But the reality is, it's not about what, what's on the certificate. It's about how long he's been active and, and you giving him the space in your life. And so uh, uh, he says, ha, 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 did he get inside you? Did y'all just go through the preliminaries? Or did he get inside of you? Verse, uh, verse, verse two. Uh, we, they said we've never heard of that. A Holy Spirit, God within us. Huh? No, their, their response was we ain't never heard of this preaching here, uh, Paul. We ain't nobody ever, ain't nobody ever asked us this before. Uh, and these folks were these were already church folks. These, these, these were not just you know these won't no sinners. These were already church folks. All right, so, so, so verse 3 says, how were you baptized then, asked Paul. 
in John's baptism. He's talking about the baptism of John the Baptist. Um, and then verse 4 says, that explains it, said Paul. John preached the baptism of radical life change so that people would be ready to receive the one coming after him who turned out to be Jesus. If you've been baptized in John's baptism, you're ready now for the real thing for Jesus. All right? Let, let, let's take this a step further. Verse 5. And, and they were. And they were. And they were. So which is, which is to suggest that these folks had only gone through a physical baptism. But Paul, after teaching them, says, look, look, look y'all, there's a different baptism I'm talking about. And the text says, after he's told them this, they were. According to the text, they were because they were in readiness of heart and of mind to receive the baptism that only comes from Jesus Christ. And as soon as they, as soon as they heard of it, they were baptized in the name of Master Jesus. Paul put his hands on their heads and the Holy Spirit into them. Y'all see what I'm saying? There's a difference because prior to this, they had only received the physical baptism. But there's a difference in the physical baptism and the actual inward dwelling where the Holy Spirit is at operation in your life. And that's where we want to be, past the physical baptism and get born again where we're spiritually uh, indignated and we're energized and enthused and infused by the power of the Holy Spirit. They said from that moment on, they were praising God in tongues and talking about God's actions. Altogether, there were about 12 people there that day. And so what this text is telling us is that these folks were introduced. They thought that they knew enough. But Paul says, did y'all really get baptized where, where the Holy Spirit came in and, and, and he took over? Or did y'all just get go through the formality? And they said, Paul, we ain't heard of this before. And so uh, because they were willing to do so, uh, they received the Holy Spirit, uh, under the baptism. Notice it's after Paul laid his hands on them. So it was transferred to these people because of the uh, Holy Spirit that rested upon his life. All right, so now, uh, as we think about this first chapter that we're in, chapter one, the nature and the role of the Holy Spirit, okay? We've got to understand, again, the Holy Spirit has been at work since day one. He never ceases to work in the life of the believer or since God has created uh, creation. So, 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 so when we look at it holistically, the Holy Spirit has always been at work. And so when someone asks you, how long has the Holy Spirit been around? As long as God has been, along, uh, been around. Well, how long has God been uh, around? Well, he says, I'm Alpha and Omega. So, so, and, 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 and even the Bible gives us, this, gives us this intelligence from everlasting to everlasting. In other words, God has been in existence for forever. And he will always be in existence. There is no time that we can say that God has been in existence because he operates outside of time. And so, when we look at Genesis chapter 1, uh, as we use this as a launching pad, Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Uh, let's look at this in the message version. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 3 from the message version. It says this. First this, God created the heavens and the earth. All you see, all you don't see. Earth was a soup of nothingness. A bottomless emptiness. An inky blackness. God's spirit brewed like a bird above the water abyss. An abyss is, is, is a pit. Uh, and in verses 3 through 5, uh, God spoke light and light appeared. Let me stop there. Notice what the text says. That, that, that the earth was dark, void, had, that, that, that the earth was a soup of nothingness. It says a bottomless emptiness. In other words, if it's bottomless, that means that it never stops. Um, and so that emptiness was endless and an inky blackness. Uh, and, and, but then there's something that took place. The Spirit of God, it says God's Spirit, brewed like a bird above the watery abyss. And then God begins to move. He says, God spoke light. Let that be light is what the King James Version says. And guess what? Light appears. So we see the Holy Spirit at work even in nature. 
Because it says that the spirit of God brooded like a bird above the watery abyss. The spirit of God was present in creation. And so, again, we talk about the nature and the role of the Holy Spirit. So the functioning of the Holy Spirit, as demonstrated, uh, and this is taken directly from the book, um, the functioning of the Holy Spirit, as demonstrated in the early Christian church, is not new. So, again, the, the functioning of the Holy Spirit is nothing new. He had been working with human beings for 4,000 years prior to the Christian era. And he's been working in the church for the for for uh, the two thousand years since, and so what this is to connote to us, what the author is trying to suggest to us, is that the Holy Spirit, his role has been in existence since forever. When you go back and you look at the creation story, the Holy Spirit was present in creation, and so uh, we see that the Holy Spirit was functioning even in uh, the creation. But when we look at uh, how when we get into the church, the church. So we understand that the Holy Spirit, uh, we look at creation and, and thousands of years later, you know, thousands of years later. So the earth is, is old. Is, I, I don't even know, uh, you know, this is a good geography question, but I don't know the answer because I didn't look it up. But the, 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 the world is very old. Uh, the earth is old. But when we look at the church, the church has only been around for a little over 2,000 years. Because the church was not birthed until Christ had came and uh, Christ had died. And then uh, we see the church being birthed in Acts. And so uh, what the author is trying to suggest to us is that the, that the Holy Spirit has been at work even in creation and before the church, before there were Christians, the Holy Spirit was in existence. All right. So, 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 so my first point is when we talk about the nature and the role of the Holy Spirit is, uh, as we look at the book, the, the, the Holy Spirit has the answers. The Holy Spirit has the answers. Now stay with me. So the Holy Spirit has been very busy functioning on behalf of mankind for over 6,000 years. He knows our problems. He knows the answers. And guess what? We need these answers from him. And so when we understand the nature and the role of the Holy Spirit, he's been at work since creation, but he has been functioning in the lives of mankind. And he knows our problems because he has insight. And then not only does he know the problems, but he knows he has the answers. And so this is why we seek the Holy Spirit. So I used to wonder, you know, uh, with the season says, you ask them a question, they said, well, no, let me pray about it. I said, why you got to pray about that? You know, you, why, why you got to pray about that? And the reality is, what they were saying is, I need to seek God so the Holy Spirit can give me the answer I need so I'll know what to do. And that's the way our lives must be. Have I consulted the Lord is what, I should, is what we should ask ourselves. Have I consulted the Lord in my decision making? Have I consulted him in the launching of my business? Have I consulted him in, 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 in the purchasing of my home? Have I consulted him in, in where I should become a member in a church? Have I consulted him as to, uh, you know, uh, it, should I take this job or should I wait? Because many times we don't consult him and we really don't have the answer. But the Holy Spirit has all the answers because he knows everything. And so our lives should be, the foundation of our life should be that we seek him for the answers. Why? Because he has the answers that we need. So every problem that may arise in our life, when we look at systemic racism, when we look at poverty, when we look at uh, what's going on in our community, when we look at what's going on within our families, the Holy Spirit has all the answers. And, and here's the thing. A lot of times we walk in defeat because we don't consult the Holy Spirit. Because the thing about it is, although he has the answers, although he knows, he does not force himself on anybody. He does not, he, does, he ain't, he ain't going to tear the walls down. He can if he want to. But he, he's not going to tear the walls down because he is a gentleman. And so when we understand what the Holy Spirit is, he must, he must be invited in. Have you ever thought about that? Uh, and, and I'm going to say something that, uh, that um, you know, maybe some people say I shouldn't say, but I'm going to say it anyway. Because the, the truth be told, when we talk about the Holy Spirit being a gentleman and he must be invited in, here's what I've come to discover. There's a difference between a church and a house of God. Okay. Let me say it again. 
There's a difference between a church and a house of God. Because there are a lot, there are a lot of churches. You know, you can just go on Google, there's churches everywhere. But there's not as many houses of God as there are churches. Why? 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 Well, here's why. It's because every church is not a house of God. Just because you're a church don't mean you're a house of God. A house of God, in order for you to be considered a house of God, that means that God must dwell there. Does God dwell? And that's the question you got to ask. I hope he does. Where you go to church, does God show up? And I'm pausing because it's something you got to think about. Does God show up where you go to worship? Because if God never shows up, you might just be going to a church and not a, and, and, and not the house of God. I don't want to just belong to a church. I want to go to a church where God dwells, where he's moving, where he's alive, where he's healing. Come on here. Where he's delivering. I don't want to go somewhere where we just sitting there on a pew. Well, we just, you know, you know, let's let you know, okay, it's you know, okay, let we looking at what we need to do now. Uh-uh. I want to go somewhere where God is moving, where the Holy Spirit is at action. And there's a difference between a church and the house of God. Because there are many places that are just buildings, but God don't dwell there. You can't look at the outside to determine what's on the inside. Because you can have a beautiful edifice, it can be state of the ark. Nothing wrong with it. You can have screens and walk back ball drops and all this. Nothing wrong with it because it's good for ministry purposes. But that doesn't mean that God dwells in it. And so many times we'll look at the storefront church and we'll say, no, nah, God can't be there. Look at them. They only got uh, four or five people. But in my lifetime, I've seen God move more mightier in a storefront church than some of these bigger churches. Why? Because the difference is the storefront, the storefront church was a house that God dwelled in, whereas these other places are just buildings. All right, well, okay. Y'all 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 talk back to me. Am I, you know, I hope I, you know, I know I may be upsetting some, you know, uh, you know, the waters a little bit, but I got to tell you because every church God don't dwell in. Every church God don't dwell in. And, and, and he must be invited in. And that's why we have invocations. That's why we have revivals. Come on, you got I I'm telling you something. If you're in the church, y'all don't, don't never have prayer meeting. Y'all don't never have revivals. Y'all don't never have nothing, you know, I'm, I, I will submit to you humbly. Uh, you know, you got to think about that because I ain't telling you to, to leave no church. I'm just saying, you you, you got to be a part of a, a of an organism. In other words, that thing needs to, that, that church needs to be moving. And, 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 and it's in him that we live. It's in him that we move. It's in him that, we're, that we have our being. And so you don't want to be a part of a church, of a building. Because I ain't just coming to go come to a building because I can go to the restaurant. That's a building. I can go to the library. That's a building. I can go to my house. That's a form of a building. But when I come to church, I come to a place to where God dwells. When is the last time that God showed up in your local church? Does he show up? Because God only shows up where he's welcome. And, and so when we think about that, we got to welcome in it. That's, how, that's why you got to be, as believers, we have to be so very cautious uh, of how we enter and approach the house of God. I know you, you can have a bad day. You can have a bad day and everything just be just off. I mean, everything is off. And I get it. We have some off days. But as believers, we learn, Lord, I don't want to leave the same way that I came. So, Lord, help me to, even though I've had a terrible day, help me to be transformed in my mind. To give you some space to move in my life so that by the time the service is over with, I don't leave the same way that I can. Because that's that that's a sad reflection of what Christ means to you when you go and you leave every week the same way. You come, you leave the same way every week, every week, every week. And you, 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 that's just going through the motions. But 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 if if I if our churches are houses of prayer, if they are places where God dwells. And God doesn't choose to dwell everywhere because he don't dwell nowhere where we're defiling his house. When there's defilement going, that's why everything can't go on in the house of God. Oh, God. I'm, uh, some of y'all want to log off. I know it. <laughs> but I guess it. Everything can't go on in the house of God. Everything can't go in the house of God because it is to be sacred. It is to be reverenced. 
And it seems like we've gotten away from that. You know, it seems like in the past, and I know everybody want to bring it on COVID, but it was before COVID, I'm not, you know. But we have gotten away from the house of God being sacred. Folks just come in any kind of way, and folks will say any kind of Folks will cut you out in the church. <laughs> They'll fight in the church. I mean, so much goes on in the church. And that's not, don't get me wrong, we are human. We are human. But but the, I, the way that I grew up, I'm just talking about me, there was a certain reverence that we had. You know, for instance, the way I grew up for the house of God, uh, everybody didn't walk in the pulpit. And, and, and if God forbid a child, you know, walk across and they say, oh, baby, uh, 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 don't, you can't walk up there. And it was not that the pulpit was some place that, you know, oh, my God, you go back. But it was just reverenced. It was just reverenced differently. We, there was a time when we reverenced the house of God and the things of God. But now it just seems like, you know, in, in, in many places, it's just entertainment. Uh, but there's got to be a difference between the church being a building and the church being a place where God chooses to dwell. So so, so, so the first point, and, and I'm coming in because it's, it's almost 8 o'clock, is that the Holy Spirit has the answers. And this is why we should constantly seek him because he has the answers. And so could it be possible that there are some things that are going on in your life that you need answers to but you fail to have the answers because you have not sought God. And sometimes we don't want to seek God because he don't tell us what we want to hear. Have you ever sought the Lord and uh, about something and uh, he didn't tell you what you want to hear? It's, it, it's, yeah, that's a hard pill to swallow. Because you know, your flesh wants what it wants. But we as believers, we understand that, that what God uh, desires for us is always what's best. All right. So, so, so um, the Holy Spirit... Holy Spirit, the role of it, and the nature of the Holy Spirit is that he has the answers. And so we must seek him every time. Every time, every time. We must seek him every time. Not the person. There's nothing wrong with wise counsel. But we should seek God for your marriage, for your children, for your family. When you, you know, even I would submit to you humbly, even with your associations and your affiliations. Lord, why do you be involved with this? Because you can, you can see way more than I can yet. And that's why some folks end up thinking, oh, well, you know, anyway, let me, let me go on here. Um, so, so, okay, all right, let me, um, because 757, and uh, I'm not going to finish all this. I, I thought it was, but I ain't. Um, so, so, let's go to this next point here. Um, the Holy Spirit, first, he has all the answers. Secondly, and again, if, you, if you're just joining us, please hit that share button. Let, let, let someone know that we're on there. The second point is this. The Holy Spirit is omnipotent. He is Omnipotent. So first, he has all the answers, but then he is omnipotent. And this again, referring to the book. Again, uh, for those of you that may be just joining us, you want to get this book of uh, the gifts and the ministries of the Holy Spirit so you can follow along. Um, I, I guarantee you, it'll bless you real good. I, I, so, you know, some of this stuff I'm taking directly out of the book. Um, the Holy Spirit is omnipotent, uh, meaning all powerful. All powerful. So uh, uh, Mr. Sumrall says this. He says, out of chaos, that existed in the beginning, he brought cosmos. And so we just read a few minutes ago that in the beginning, uh, in Genesis, that the, the, the world was dark, it was void, it was a, a, a bottomless pit of emptiness, but then the Spirit of God began to move, and uh, God said, let, let there be light, and then light shows up. Now, now let me, let, me, let me tag team that with this, because out of chaos, meaning there was no structure, um, it was, you know, there was no organization, you know, uh, if you will, um, you know, there was nothing that, you know, there was nothing there. There was, there was no, you know, God had not begun to work with things yet. So, so, so out of chaos that existed in the beginning, he brought cosmos. What is cosmos? Cosmos, C-O-S-M-O-S, -O -S, is originally a Greek word meaning both order and world. So, 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 uh, we now use that word cosmos, um, uh, without the idea of perfect order. So when we think about cosmos, what that is to suggest is, so when we say out of chaos, which is confusion, that existed in the beginning, um, he brought cosmos, meaning that in an unstructured, unorganized situation, God brought cosmos, meaning order. He brought alignment. He brought, uh, he brought, amen, things together. And so, when, when God began to speak, Again, we're talking about the Holy Spirit being omnipotent. Um, when God spoke, his word obeyed him. And the reason why his word obeyed him is because, just like God, the Holy Spirit is omnipotent, powerful, 
all powerful. Who can stand up against them? Nobody. And so when we understand the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we understand that he is omnipotent, all powerful. And so if, if our first point was he has the answers, now we're saying that he's omnipotent. So if he has all the answers, first question I'm going to ask you, and I asked you a few minutes ago, why are we not seeking him? But now I want to ask you, even more so, if he has all power, if he is powerful, then the reality is we need to seek him like never before. Because I will submit to you humbly that the power that he has, now listen, listen to me, if the Holy Spirit is omnipotent, which he is, that same power that he has, he has through, through the spirit of adoption as sons and daughters of God, we too have a power that's working in us that cannot be defeated. Did you catch what I said? If the Holy Spirit is omnipotent, if he is powerful, if he is a powerful being, which he is, when we receive him into our lives and he works into our lives, do you not realize that you have a power, a force, an agent that's working in you that cannot be defeated? And I know someone said, well, then why did so-and-so die of cancer? Because things happen in the permissible will of God. You got to understand, it's not just, well, I got something working inside of me so I can do, you know, no, no, no. Uh, God will allow things to happen in his permissive will. So even the believers go through hardship. We have loved ones that will die because it's part of God's permissive will. Why did my loved one get shot? Because it was a part of God's permissive will. A lot of things happen because of God's permissive will. And so I don't have time to go into the submissive and permissive will of God on tonight. But I want to, I want to, I want to just nail this in as we close. That if the Holy Spirit is all-powerful, when we receive him into our life, this is why you got to have him. This is, what, not it, this is why you got to have him. Because when you receive him into your life, you have a power that cannot be defeated. And this is why you can walk on serpents. The Bible says we can tread on serpents, the lion and the adder. We can, the, the Bible says we'll all trample, they'll all be trampled on our feet. We can drink of deadly poison and, and, and not even know about it and we won't get sick. We can go in the atmosphere where there's demonic activity and demons have got to go. Why? Because we have a power that's working inside of us that cannot be defeated. And I want to ask you on tonight, do you have him operating in your life? Because you're going to need that power backing you up. And this is why we don't have to defend ourselves when people do us wrong. No, no, no. We go to him. And when we go to him, he fights for us. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You ain't got, you ain't got, when, when, when people do you wrong, and I know that when, when things occur in your life, I can't believe they did that. You know what? Let them do it. Let them do it. Let them do it. Let them do it. I, I, you let them do it. Because when you allow, when you allow God's will to take place. Because a lot of times we get mad and say, God, oh, you ain't going to do that to me. And we, in, we, 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 what we do is we go in. And we, we take over and we throw a monkey wrench in the plan of God. And sometimes we look at things and we say, no, nah, I ain't going to let them do it like that. And the reality is God said, if you just sit back, I got something a whole lot. When well, they took the house, <laughs> so don't worry about it. Because I'm going to bless you with, well, that was a one-story, I'm going to bless you with a two-story. When well, they took the car, well, well, that was a Honda, not, not knocking on because I had one. God knows, I'm just I'm just paraphrasing, or, or, or a Pinto, or, or something that was about to break down. I'm going to bless you with something that's off the showroom floor. Many times we will mess up God's plan for our lives because we get involved because of our emotions. And you've got to allow yourself to be driven and to be maneuvered and to be guided by the Spirit of God in your life rather than your emotions. Will your emotions try to get in the way? Yes. Will, the, will your emotions try to get the best of you? Yes. Do we have our moments? Yes. But I submit to you, you've got to learn how to stop, try to pull yourself together and say, Lord, help me. I don't want to do what, you know, you have, have, have you ever, and I'm close out, this, I, look, it's 804. <laughs> have you ever been in a place where you know that you want, you, you, you want to do something that you know you shouldn't be doing? 
And you was like, Lord, just let me do it. Lord, just let me do it. Now you say nothing, nothing necessarily ungodly when you going, you know, if you, I'm just saying, you know, you ain't supposed to do it. You won't fast, and you know you ain't supposed to eat no sweets, and you just, Lord, just let me have this. Let me just have this donut. Let me just have this donut. The, the light is on that Krispy Kreme. The light is on that Krispy Kreme. Temptation, temptation, temptation. And many times, many times, we will abort the will of God for our lives because our flesh steps in, and whenever flesh steps in, it takes over. Our flesh wants what it wants. And this is why we got to be driven and guided because our flesh can say some cruel things. When we think about that, there's some things that we've said that we know we should have said that has been ungodly, you know, not Christ-like and things of that nature. And this is why we got to be constantly driven by the Holy Spirit. Lord, you know what? You brighten my tongue so that I can get to the point of maturity in you to where I, I could say it, but I choose not to because I desire to be uh, controlled by the Holy Spirit and not my my flesh. And and that's what we want to be in the eyesight of God, to where we let him control us. We let him lead and guide us and not our flesh and our um, temptations because it ain't going nowhere. It ain't going nowhere. It is permanent. All right, so we, we're going to stop there. We, we're still in chapter one. So 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 for those of you um, that are joining us tonight, um, so homework would be, if you have not read chapter one in its entirety, go ahead and read chapter one and chapter two. Uh, we're going to finish up the rest of chapter one next week. Uh, I, don't, I don't have time uh, because of the sake of time. To, we're already over the time um, to, to finish chapter one tonight, but um, we'll, we'll finish it next week and then go into our next. Yeah, because I got a whole bunch of slides there, so I, I ain't going to try to. Yeah, so 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 um, if you would, God bless your hearts. Thank God for every one of y'all. Y'all 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 still on here tonight. We still got, hey, we got, look, look, listen, we got 10. We got 10. And I, I, I look, if it's five, we roll with the five. If it's 10, we roll with the 10. I'm just determined that those that are hungry, we, we, we'll make sure you got something to eat. That's, that's what we all, in our walk with Christ this year, we, we, we believe in God for growth, and growth is a great thing. But if we never grow, um, you know, to, to be, you know, um, you know, 200 and 300 members, uh, as long as the ones that are here uh, keep showing up to eat, we're going to make sure you, you get fed. And that's where our focus is this year as we think about um, um, spiritual reset. We want to make sure that we're eating um, and digesting the Word of God that He can have His way in our life. That's what we desire. All right. So as we um, as we as we get get ready to go off, um, if there are any prayer requests that you have, you can throw them out. You can put them in the chat. Um, if you got any prayer requests, put them in the chat thread. Prayer requests. We're praying for you always. Um, know we're praying for you. We love you with the love of God. But if there's any prayer requests, you can put them in the chat thread. We'll we'll call your name out. Uh, any prayer requests, you can do so at this time. Any prayer requests. Any prayer requests, put them in the chat thread. God bless you, Elder Jones. I see um, Bishop Washington. God, God bless you. My mama's on here. God, thank, God bless all, each and every one of y'all. God bless your hearts. Um, if, it, if there are any prayer requests, you can put them out. I don't see any coming through the coming through the thread. Okay, uh, we, we're praying for you, um, Sister Yolanda Farrington. We're praying for you. And um, if, if you don't put them in now, if I don't see them now for whatever reason, because sometimes there's a delay on uh, with the uh, with the chat and stuff on Facebook, we I, I do go back and uh, we will submit your name and uh, uplift your name before the Lord. So um, um, while you're praying for, for others, keep me in prayer. Uh, and this year, beloved, I I am just going uh, and seeking the things of God like never before. Not that I've never did it in previous years, but I'm just in a place. Uh, yes, we we are playing. We will be in prayer for Lady Washington. We see your uh, comment there, Bishop Washington. But I, I I am in a place to where I'm just chasing after the things of God like never before. And I, I don't know how y'all feel about it. I don't know how y'all feel about it. I don't know how y'all feel about it. I'm just talking about me. I am just in a place to where I am just fine-tuning myself to what God wants for me to do. Uh, and I, I, I ain't got time for other stuff. I ain't got time for negativity. I ain't got time for foolishness. I ain't got time for, you know, I, uh, I, I just don't, I, I just don't, I'm turning a deaf ear to a lot of stuff, um, you know, because of some fact, uh, we, I got somewhere I'm trying to get to in Christ, um, even as a pastor. Um, it ain't about me being a pastor, but it's about me being a better Christian. It's about, it's about me being a, a better Christian. We see your, 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 your uh, request, all right? We're praying for Sister Marion Kimball, Sister Sonetta Wilson, and Sister Deborah uh, Conley, all right? We're praying for them. But I, I don't know, maybe I hope some of y'all feel the way that I feel. I'm just in a place to where God, whatever you want me to do, I'm willing to do it. I don't care if everybody, I don't care if everybody turn their back on me. Because you know sometimes when you sign up and do, do, do the Lord's will, some stuff will happen out of the woodworks. 
But I am just convinced that if I have the power of the Holy Spirit working inside of me, that he's going to do and he's going to keep me and sustain me. Even when I go through the vicissitudes of life, when I go through some tumultuous winds and storms and rain happen, if I stay with Jesus, He's going he to get me through. And, 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 I, and I would that we would just get that in our spirits. That whatever this year, because some folks are already saying 2024, oh, it's already, uh-uh, uh-uh. It's, it's going to be a good year. God's going to show up. He's going to bless. He's going to provide. He's going to make way. And I am looking to him to do it for me in this year. Uh, and so, all right, we, we see you. Uh, thank you uh, to my to my mom. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in. All right. Uh, pray, uh, pray for uh, Uncle Andrew, uh, Sister um, uh, Elder, Elder Jones, uh, we're praying for Sister Beverly. Um, all right, so so let, let's let's go down and pray. Father, we thank you for time well spent. And God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your word. Thank you for your word, God. Your word is so precious and it's so priceless. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to just share on Facebook. And God, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And God, we pray that we did no harm. But God, that, that your people have been blessed through and by the word of God. Lord, now we lift up every prayer request. Every petition, every name, even the names that are unspoken. God, show up, show out. Oh, God, heal, deliver, set free, God, if there be anyone that's bound on tonight. We ask the Lord that you would just break that yoke in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, lift the burdens. Oh, God, as you uh, as we go from day to day, God, touch us all you can. Oh, God, we bind sickness. We bind disease. We bind infirmity. God, we bind backbiting. We, got, we bind malicious intent. God, we plead the blood of Jesus over every name spoken on tonight in this chapter, every name that was typed in. God, we plead the blood of Jesus like never before. God, cover us under your blood in the name of Jesus. God, let your Shekinah glory, let your anointing. Oh, God, let it rest upon us like never before, that we as your sons and daughters, as we are your agents in the earth realm, God, use us for your glory. Use us for your praise. Use us for your honor. And God, we pray that, God, as you're using us, let us decrease, that you would increase even the more. We take no glory. We take no honor. We take no credit. But we give it all to you. For it's, for it's in you that we live. It's in you that we move. It's in you that we have our being. So, God, we thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you're doing. And we thank you for, what, that, for that which you have yet to do. And we decree and declare the blessings of the Lord upon our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Well, God bless each and every one of you. I am just convinced that God is up to something. And he's up to something real good. So those of you that are able, join us next week for our next session of Wednesday night as we journey through the book of the gifts and the ministries of the Holy Spirit. Those that are able, join us tomorrow night. We're in revival with the Dr. J. Vincent Terry at 7 o'clock p.m. All roads lead to the grove. If you can't be there, pray for us. Until the time that we should come together on next week, be blessed. We love you in the name of the Lord. Have a good night.